Today, we got a 2015 Ford 6.7 on the lift. We're going to do an install on a 165 Ford G. Uh, this is going to be applicable from 2011 to 2016 Ford 6.7s. Um, this is the 165 Ford G that is going to fully bypass your factory frame rail pump. So, first things first, we're going to go ahead and go over the tools you'll be needing. Uh, very simple install on this. We try to utilize as many factory lines as possible and on this vehicle we're actually able to utilize quite a few of them. Uh, so just a couple wrenches, 7 16 half inch, 9 16 wrench and sockets, a uh, pair of side cuts to trim your zip ties, hose cutters, a good set of Allen wrenches. Uh, you will need a sharp razor blade, we'll get into that, so do have a fresh razor blade. Uh, and then we have some impacts just to kind of speed the process up a little bit. So. We'll go ahead and uh, get this kit opened up so we can take a look here. Alrighty. So this uh, will be the harness we'll be using. This is the 010 harness. Uh, this is our universal go to a key on trigger. Uh, this unit will come with 14 foot of hose. Uh, depending on which cab configuration you have, you may not use all of this. going to have your sub assembly kit. This is going to come with the fittings needed to install it as well as your cradle bracket and hardware kit. This will be our sandwich plates. Uh, these are going to mount on either side of the frame rail uh, and one has different mounting hole locations uh, so you can get the pump tucked up nice tight out of the way. Um, they are almost like a uh, bed liner uh, rock guard style finish so nice and strong won't chip or anything for you. Uh, nice clean natural look under the frame rail. Um, you'll have your install directions. One thing that is very important to note, uh, your warranty card will be in these. So make sure you fill that warranty card out, send that back to us within the 30 days of purchase. We will need the serial number. You can easily find that serial number uh, on the front tag of your pump. Or if you look underneath the barcode on the front of your box, it will also be listed there. So uh, one thing to note. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this fitting box opened up here. Uh, take a look and then uh, pull this factory lift pump off this truck and get this install going. On this truck, we will utilize a fuel return Y. This will tie your two factory return lines together uh, and add the air dog return. So there's no need to cut uh, the filler neck and do an inline style return there. Uh, this is your customer service O ring kit. Comes with every O ring needed to service the air dog lift pump if you do ever need. Uh, so do kind of keep a hold of that, throw it in the glove box, kind of forget about it in case you need it. Um, this is your standard hardware bag. This will come with the bolts to mount your sandwich plates to the frame rail as well as your pump to your sandwich plates. This is the spacer block that will be used uh, when mounting the air dog. It will go in between this cradle bracket and your sandwich plate. Um, this cradle bracket is also that same finish as we talked about with these uh, sandwich plates. And then it will come with some zip ties for you so you can clean up your uh, wiring harness as well as your lines uh, after install. Uh, and then here's your assorted fitting bag. You're going to have your aluminum fittings that thread into your base uh, and then the uh, plastic push locks fittings to uh, allow for connections on the factory fuel, uh, fuel lines. So these are going to be J2044 style quick connects, exactly the same as an OE uses. Uh, this is what allows our kit to be very non-invasive connecting to a lot of factory lines. Locate your factory lift pump. It's going to be in between your tank and your transfer case. So first things first is we're going to have to remove all the electrical connectors from this as well as the fuel line connections. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start by getting the electrical connections off here. Alrighty, we'll need to grab a screwdriver or something and pop that off. But one thing to note um, is how to remove these actual fuel line connections. So there's going to be a lock on these. You're going to want to go ahead and pull that lock up. You'll press the fitting in to relieve the stress off of it. Go ahead and push that tab in and pull out. Um, and you're going to do that on all these line connections. Uh, so a couple of these, uh, that one I initially took off is going to be your factory return. We'll kind of get in this a little bit. Um, but these are all going to be your factory uh, return and feeds that run both through this lift pump. 
just be careful because there is going to be some fuel uh, retaining in this. So do have a bucket ready as well as some hazmat pads just to make sure you kind of keep your mess clean. There's going to be four 13 millimeters. Uh, they'll be nuts. That's actually what's holding your actual factory lift pump on. So we've got an impact here. So we're going to go ahead and buzz those off. sure that your lines and your wiring are not caught up on this lift pump bracket so that you're not going to damage anything. We'll get that all pulled off. Set that down in the bucket so we can return that back to the coaster. If this air dog mounted up and we have a little bit more room to work, uh, we're going to need to trim this rubber hose off of this factory suction line. Um, one thing to note, this is where a sharp razor blade is going to come into play because any scoring you cause on this can create a suction leak. So you want to make sure you have a nice clean cut. So we're going to go ahead and get that trimmed and pulled off of there. I'm going to utilize this here shortly for the uh, air dog suction. Since this is already a barbed tapered, uh, you know, lead in style, this will completely seal on our hose. So we'll be able to press the hose directly onto that. Uh, but we'll kind of show you a little bit more here in a second. The reason we are doing this uh, is because if you were to try to use that factory connection, um, the air dog pump is longer than the factory lift pump. So it would cause a kink in that suction hose. Um, this also will vary between a regular cab uh, and a crew cab, but on this particular truck, we are doing a crew cab installation. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and mount the air dog pump into this cradle bracket. This is going to allow us to figure out what height uh, and hole location we need to use on our sandwich plate. So we're going to go ahead and open up our hardware bag here. You're going to need the four socket head style bolts as well as nuts and lock and flat washers. So make sure that when you uh, install it to the bracket, it will, will clear your fuel filter. So just kind of make sure you're centered up there. So now that we got that centered up, we're gonna go ahead and tighten it up. We'll be using a three six. Go ahead and get this sandwich plate kind of lined up here. Obviously these two bolts are gonna be above your frame rail. So line that up. Now this customer did state that they wanted this tucked up tight. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go to our highest setting. It appears though on this particular application, it will be the lowest two bolt holes on this cradle bracket. So we're going to go ahead and get these bolted together. So when installing these together, you will be using this spacer block. Uh, so do not forget to do that. You're going to be using the flat head style bolts as they will sit flush in these countersunk holes on your plate. Alrighty, and then you will need a nut as well as lock washer on all four of these bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and begin tightening these. You're gonna need your 3 16 Allen wrench again, as well as a half inch socket. Um, one thing to note is you wanna make sure that your pump is nice and aligned on this bracket. So normally I go all the way down and then all the way to one side just so it's nice and squared up. Go ahead and get your Allen wrench on there. We're gonna get all four of these tight and get it mounted up in the truck. All right, so like I noted earlier, given to the tightness of this application, uh, since we're gonna utilize one of these factory fuel lines, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that to tighten these until all fuel line connections are installed. In case you need to shift it one way or the other, just to make sure you're not kinking these factory lines. Uh, fittings, um, is that it is an aluminum fitting going into an aluminum base. So, do make sure to oil these to verify that you don't have any galling of the threads. I like to just go ahead and put them in hand tight initially. We do list the torque spec in the install manual, but we do realize that a lot of you guys do not have torque wrenches to torque these. So we'll kind of show you here in a second uh, using a wrench. You don't have to get these extremely tight, guys. There's an O-ring seal. So just get them, you know, to where finger tight, crush that O-ring, and we're going to give it a nice little snug. Um, but they really don't need to be cranked on or anything like that. So for your larger 08 uh, fittings, you're going to be using a three quarter inch wrench. Like I said, guys, just need to snug them up. You don't need to kill them or anything like that. Um, and especially on this 06 fitting, this is our return fitting. You're going to need a five eighths wrench. If you over tighten this, it will break it. So go ahead and just compress that O-ring just a little bit and then just 
just a little you know nudge with a wrench you don't need to you know get on this real hard like i said it will break the reason we do an aluminum fitting here and not a steel is because if this breaks it won't damage the threads in the base we can get that removed we can get your new fitting and we didn't you know damage anything internally in the air dog so on this particular application we're going to utilize uh, this yellow uh, fitting here this is going to become your air dog outlet like I said, guys, you wanna make sure that we don't fully tighten this in case we do need to slide this just a little bit so that we're not kinking this hose. So we'll go ahead and get that popped in there. Looks like our lock kind of popped down, so we're gonna get that back pulled up. And then just go ahead and press that lock down, and there's your outlet line, just as easy as that, right onto the factory connection. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and start uh, building our suction line for the air dog. Depending on the cab configuration, it'll vary which fitting you use. Single cabs, we use a straight, where this being a crew cab, we'll use a 90. So um, one thing to note, you do have to oil the inside diameter of this hose uh, and the outside of this fitting, or you will struggle to install it. It does make it much easier. I would say it's a requirement. So go ahead and uh, get this all oiled up here. Kind of get that moved around. And then all in one motion, so we sink all these barbs. I'm gonna go ahead and press this in. On this particular application, um, this bend, if you were to go directly from this line uh, to here would be pretty severe. So what we actually recommend is you're gonna wanna route it behind the pump. And this is just kind of to get a rough length on the hose. So you're gonna wanna route it behind the pump and then do your 90 quick connect fitting up to this. So we're gonna go ahead and get all this pulled through, cut to length, so we can show you a little bit better. Um, but just to kind of give you guys a you know a little warning, if you were to try to make that bend, it would be very sharp and likely kink the hose. So we went ahead and get that got that pressed on, and then we're gonna get an estimate on our length here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our hose cutters. And remember, you're gonna wanna press this hose all the way up past this, so make sure that you're not cutting it too short. And guys, we're going to want to oil the inner diameter of this hose as well as this here so we get that pressed on nice and easy. There's no need for a hose clamp on this as it is the same style as what factory would have been. We have our air dog suction tied back into our factory line as well as the air dog outlet going back into our uh, pre existing factory line. We're going to go ahead and install this uh, return key. So, what you're going to want to do you're gonna to want to pull this factory return line. It's gonna clip on. Actually, we're gonna turn that around just for a little cleaner install. Get that pressed on, press that lock down. I'm gonna reach up in here and grab the other side. But then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and clip on your other factory connection and make sure that you do lock those. Return line, this is gonna be very tight on this application, obviously due to the transfer case. Um, but we're gonna be tying the air dog return back into the return port that we added using that return line. So that's gonna tie those two factor returns together and add the air dog return all at one time so it's nice and clean. Um, you're gonna need approximately an eight inch section of hose. On the air dog side, we're gonna go ahead and press a 90 on. And then on the return wise side, we're gonna use a straight. Um, just to be a little bit easier, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the bench and assemble this. So we're gonna oil the outer diameter of this fitting and the inner diameter of this hose. Always guys, that's very crucial. You'll notice that the straights are a little bit easier to install because you can go ahead and get those nice and lubed up. And then all at one motion on the table using your body weight. A little tip on the smaller 90s is they can be a little bit harder to install. Is go ahead and get it pressed as far as you can. And then with both hands, press and turn it as like if you were threading it in. So it's going to be a little bit tight to film here, but what we're doing is we're hooking this straight connection up to this return Y that we added. I'll try to loop it around through the back here so you guys can kind of see. Go ahead and get that connected. Alrighty, and then you're going to want to hook this 90 up at the air dog. So we're going to wrap this down in a 90 degree directly onto the air dog. So nice clean line there um, it's a little bit harder to install because it's small but it does fit very nicely so 
We're gonna go ahead, grab some zip ties. I think we're gonna zip tie this up here just to make sure that it's not rubbing chafing on anything. That is always crucial on all installs to make sure you get your lines and wiring tied up so you don't have any issues down the road. So as you guys remember later, 9 16ths in the old kangaroo pouch. So go ahead and pull that out and we're gonna get this tightened back up. Now that we got the pump mounted and all the lines connected, uh, we're gonna go ahead and spin our filters on. Air dogs are self priming, but one thing you guys can do sometimes if you're struggling is go ahead and tighten this fuel filter all the way and then back it off about a half a turn. And then put the water separator on completely tight. So what that's gonna do um, is this is the suction side of the pump. So the pump is gonna suck, fill this filter up completely. It is gonna push it through into the fuel filter so once it pushes the fuel in here and fills the filter up completely, fuel will come out of the top of this. You'll tighten it up, and then the air dog is completely primed. Alrighty, so the first step you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna mount your air dog relay. Um, a lot of times we ask that you mount this on the firewall, uh, but anywhere good that is close to the battery connections as you will be hooking to the positive and negative battery terminals, as well as this connection at the air dog itself. Alrighty guys, so now that we got that relay mounted, we're gonna go ahead and get this dropped down to the underside of the truck. Alrighty, so this connector here is only gonna be used for the fuel pressure warning light. That is a kit that isn't to be purchased separately. So if they're not using it, uh, they'll just wanna tie this up out of the way. As well as you're gonna have some uh, blue and orange wires. Um, you'll wanna put those up out of the way as well. But do know if these are to ever somehow touch, they will pop the fuse. So we do recommend to tape these up the positive and negative hooked up to the battery. Uh, on these Fords, they do have nice terminals to where you're able just to go directly uh, to the terminal. So we'll go ahead and get those put on. Get the uh, key on fuse tap installed. Um, on this particular vehicle, we're gonna use fuse 56. Uh, it's gonna be key on, basically that's gonna be the fuse that uh, turns the interior fuse box on. So uh, anytime this vehicle's remote start, anything like that, it'll turn on. So. Uh, good cost of fuel pressure at all times. The fuse that you remove uh, to install this in the fuse box will always go back into this open side of this. This will retain your factory circuit as well as add our two amp circuit. Wiring all tucked up nice and clean, uh, hidden out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and get, this, uh, get the hood down, get this truck back up in the air, finish the wiring on the bottom side of the truck, uh, and it's ready for a test drive. Harness all zip tied up. Um, we want to make sure that it obviously cannot come in contact with this front drive shaft. So we're going to use some existing loom uh, to make sure that that's not, you know, a potential issue. Uh, so we're going to get this all fed up nice and clean. Uh, and then, like I said, zip tied up out of the way nice and secure. Alrighty guys, so we just got all the wiring done. That'll complete the install on this 2015 6.7 power stroke. So we're going to get it on the ground, get it fired up, take it for a test drive.